I do around here want to be incorporating more and more video, but the way that I do this show, the way that I think of it is just as an audio show. It's the way that I prefer it to feel like no one is actually watching what it is that we're doing so that we can be our most authentic selves because broadcast and television has a veneer, a layer on it. When you know you're being watched, it removes some of the authenticity. However, because I want to watch together the Joe Negro cheats poorly video. I just want to throw up on the screen right now, please. Joe Negro's on the mound, both he and his brother, just ridiculous and not looking like athletes at all. They threw butterfly knuckleballs. Uh, they looked like old men when they were young men. They looked like they were in their 50s. And <laughs> is that Steve Palermo? Is the umpire who noticed that, that he threw it by? Look, I mean, it's just so great. <laughs> it's amazing. It <laughs> he would have gotten away with it if it wasn't a metal nail file because it got the, it glinted in the light it oh, caught the light so and it's one of those old-fashioned ones which i imagine he had to get one of those like metal ones because a that's probably all they made back then and b he was using it to rub the ball right to like give it more traction the nail files i use would not be capable of that <laughs> this is like some serious nail salon right there also if he doesn't throw it to the side he's got to do this move right where he's checking his pockets he grabs it in his back pocket and he goes what i can't believe it he throws his hands up in the air no, and it flies you, opposite you grab it out of the pocket and carefully like slide it down the ass crack yeah you guys are all Monday you morning. Go Keister. You're all, all Monday morning quarterbacks what i'm thinking of as i watch that between is between the ass cheeks the second the sideways before he reaches down there and pulls it cartoonishly out of pockets that get turned inside out. I was thinking of the amount of fear involved where he's saying, this is my last resort. What am I going to do here? I'm, I'm literally surrounded by umpires. How do I get out of this situation? When uh, And then when he throws it on the ground, look at his move after he throws it on the ground where he's like, the umpire notices, and he's like, what? It's Whoa. right there. I, I mean, what is that? What? What? Uh, Jess, I think you're going to have to clarify on sideways. I didn't mean sideways like horizontal. <laughs> like I meant like vertical. When I use a Whoa. nail file, I'm I'm using it like this way. Like I meant so, you know that side, not you know not spreading the cheeks perpendicular to the crack of the ass. Uh, Mike, thank you for the correction because if she meant vertical and said sideways, and what we are talking about is sliding. A nail file. Don't try this at home. Like kids. a credit card. That's what I meant. Through the ass yeah. crack. Yeah. I meant the side, so like skinny. You know how it has multiple sides. So there's, it's got a top and a bottom, and it's got sides, and then there's like a tiny little like, you know, it's like a rectangle, right? That side is the side that I meant to put ways. Plus, it's got a pointy side too, so I don't even know. The I mean, old, the the old side tiny harder, ones are the, the side that you actually use to shave things. Like your it one of the sides of that of that kind of nail file yes. has like the on the side of your ass cheek. How would he have had time to do that exactly? He I'm, I'm he did have time. I mean, this video we're showing like the end part, but he's up there for a while, like emptying his pockets before he fully takes them out. Like he turns them inside out, and he's up there, and that's when he before the ump's like, all right, empty your pockets, just do this slyly, like boop boop boop, slide but it in. There's two layers he has. Slide. It. What are they gonna clothes. do? Make him pull his pants down? Well, to to be clear, I just want to be clear on what Jessica is saying here. You are saying that he needs to reach into his right back pocket, conceal the entirety of the nail file, and then I could have done do it. the ass wiping motion inside of his pants and dare Steve Palermo to go check his orifices the way you would if you were letting an inmate into jail at security. He also had an opportunity there where he could have taken the file out of his back pocket and just slowly and subtly put it in the back pocket of the umpire standing next to him. <laughs> that might have worked. File, you're using a nail file. <laughs> Does it like a magician puts it behind his ears like, whoa, yeah, look. This. So if you check out the video, you see there, there's even stuff in the back pocket already of that umpire. It's right there. It's full. He could have done it. He had an opportunity. Ken Herbeck, you got to stand closer to Necro in that situation, but you're too consumed with the chaw on the side of your mouth right now. So important to talk about Ken Herbeck, who is a great player, who's there number 14 on the right side of the video. He's got to be more involved as an accomplice there. He could have closed the gap and stepped in between Palermo and Negro providing a clear and path. And stepped on it. Yes. Put the yes. foot on it. Yes. The size of Chaw in Ken Herbeck's mouth right now is unsettling to me.
I'm really enjoying the idea of planting evidence on the umpire like a police officer would. That's exactly what I want. Exactly. Just put it in his back pocket. He had an opportunity. Or give put a little reach around, give him a hug with one arm, and then just drop it into like the front pocket around. of a t-shirt. We, we have to be careful with the language in this segment. Yeah, that's on me. That's my bad. I mean, go sit in the penalty box yeah. for two minutes. You also got to bring stirrups back. That's my other takeaway from this so video. So true. Put it on the poll, please, Juju, at Lebitard Show. Do we need to bring stirrups back? I saw a lot of guys wearing American flag socks playing baseball yesterday. Yeah, yeah. That's it. The merchandising of <laughs> of our nation symbol, Dan. We do this every Fourth of July. There's a big deal with uh, the company, and I wish I had the name Stance. Stance. Does that name mean anything yes. to anybody? Yes. yes. Stance socks. I think D Wade was an early investor. Yeah. It's big. They do all MLB socks, and they come up with socks for every occasion. So stirrups. There's even socks that have stirrups painted on them. So they're not actual stirrups. You're somebody who has an expansive and colorful sock collection, are you not? You're you're somebody who's absurdly cartoonish when it comes to socks, yes? Yes, I enjoy my socks very much. How, ma how many socks do you think that you White have? Or red. I happen to know the exact number. No. I have different types of socks. So I have running socks in one drawer. Then I've got the stance type socks that you travel with or that you wear. And then I've got the dress socks. And so I have a total of 42 dress socks, so I know that I don't wear more than one a month. And for running socks, I have to have 44 because I have them in two places, and I do it purposefully for the runs that I do for training. Did you ever own a pair of stirrups? No. So stirrups are very big. They're, they're also the – so they're belts for your socks. They're, they're an extra added thing, and players got sick of it. So that's how they combined stirrups and socks. So they painted the stirrups so, on the socks. Explain the stirrups to me, though. There was a there was a time where socks just wouldn't stay up, and athletes had a devil of a time keeping them. So the solution was, let's get a belt for our socks. Well, it was because baseball pants didn't go to the ankles. So there's a, a little note for old-time baseball people. Baseball pants used to be like knickers. And so they needed something to bridge the gap between the bottom <laughs> of the pants you got to be really careful there. With describing old-time baseball yes. pants? We had a, a yes. podcast once where Paul uh, Lucas, UniWatch, the guy that Roy oh. subscribes to, described the history of stirrups to us. And I don't remember any of it, but it was riveting stuff. <laughs> I want to only wear stirrups for the rest of my life. What is the third number of socks that you have? Uh, what is the total number I of socks I don't know the number have? of stance socks I have, but they're all different occasions because the team gives them for all sorts of different things. So I have basic Marlin socks of all types. The colorful ones, though, the ridiculous ones. How well, many of those do you have? Sh certainly 20. Seems to be an upset when you have the exact number of dress socks and the exact number of running socks, but you're like, ah, the stance, I just throw because them in the Because I don't wear those. They're not part of a rotation. That I do. So I don't need to know. If you think about it, that makes perfect sense. They're just additional socks. <laughs> Stance is to blame for this new sock hustle, which is you need you now need a sock for your left All and your right. right foot. All right, put it on the poll, Juju. If you think about it, does it make perfect sense that you have 42 of one kind of sock and 44 of another kind of sock? But you don't know the third kind. <laughs> you, that makes perfect okay, sense. Okay, I'm my, glad that that makes perfect sense. I have sense a gigantic pile of socks that are either the left or the right. <laughs> And really? sometimes I'll return. Oh. Like, for, for example, I'm wearing red stand socks right now. I was looking for the right stand sock for eight months, and it just appeared. The, the sock Put it up to the camera, to by back. the way. Do you wear two L's ever? I've yeah. done that once when I when traveling, and I realized, oh, this is all just a grift. Uh -huh. Left, left is totally fine. I don't think David Sampson would find that. I think, they would, I think David Sampson would have trouble running ten steps with two different socks, with a left-footed sock on the right foot. Wait, what is the third kind of sock? Sock. No, God. I so regret that you asked that question, Jessica. I regret more that he answered it. Oh. Is that not it? No. What, did you tee that up for him? No. Did you guys? Never. What? No. Me? That's that, disgusting. This has been a... This, oh, this, men this are segment, terrible. This segment has had a lot of bad oh, stuff in it. Oh, so let's, gross. Uh, let's lighten up here for a second. 16-year-old in phys ed taking the first step, and oh, why is my right. sock crunching? All right, stop. Oh, God. <laughs> Mike. Mike. Oh, so gross. Mike. Oh. 
Yeah, no, we've Nasty never done that. Sense Mike, of humor. Mike, go sit in the penalty we box. We don't talk about jerking go off on this show. Go sit never. in the penalty box for two minutes. More uh, convenient than the sleeve of your favorite jacket, I'm just uh, saying. So get for me, please, uh, first, because Rick Ross made me laugh a couple of times this weekend. I was not aware that there is such a thing as a Lamborghini yacht. Is that something that you were aware uh, existed, David Sampson? A Lamborghini engine yacht? Uh, it's No, I think the whole thing, it's a, it's a $4 million dollar yacht that Rick Ross owns and I I knew there was such a thing as a four million dollar yacht but I did not know that Lamborghini made a uh, yacht so put that on the poll Juju at Levitard show did you know that Lamborghini made yachts is that a yacht to you that looks like a speedboat uh, it is big enough. I think the size is what classifies something for a yacht versus a speedboat. I think speedboat. 30 feet, right? Anything over 30 feet can be a that yacht. That is very big. Like, that's not a cigarette boat. That's not a speedboat. That's a very large, uh, uh, I, I think, would that go, that wouldn't classify as a ship either, right? There's a Ship there's needs a, to be, like, huge. Yes, I think it goes <laughs> boat, yacht, ship. I am not a... Uh, Dingy. Well, if you're boat. rich, you call your yacht your boat. But the other video from this weekend that I wanted to see, because uh, it, it made me burst out laughing in the way that I think very few people would make me burst out laughing this way. Rick Ross tried to do a dive on a diving board, and his knees totally gave out in a, in a way that was kind of... Kind of, kind of, kind of the flexibility of the board will get you. <laughs> Now he was uh, he was asked if he was okay, and he said, "No, of course I'm not okay. I, uh, you know, I, I got I blew my tire because he he said I was trying to do a double decker slapper, which is a phrase he just made up. Uh, it doesn't exist, and that's what ended up." <laughs> Have you ever been on a diving board? I have. It's yes. very uncomfortable. That last, if you if you time it wrong, I think his knees didn't give out. I think he timed the bounce back wrong of the diving board, and then you're totally screwed because it looks like your knees gave out. It's when you get like dead legged on a on a trampoline. Yeah, yeah exactly. same thing. Exactly the same thing. You can't play that video enough for me. Uh, just <laughs> I'm glad he fell forward. Well, but he just had he had in his imagination. I'm just going to do a somersault that uh, that really soars through the solar system. <laughs> <laughs> and instead, I just collapsed. Adnan Verk is ready for this segment with uh, real strong bed hair, even though he's a <laughs> professional broadcaster uh, who usually, on, when he's on MLB Network, he looks like he is ready to go and his hair never looks like that. But because he's slumming around here in the sewers where we do our movie work, he looks uh, exactly as he would look if he were sleeping next to you right now. Uh, we are going to get to his top five comedies of all time and David Sampson top five comedies of all time. I recommend that you listen to Cinephile, where you can get Adnan Verk's uh, tapestry of film information. Nothing personal. David Sampson also reviews a movie every single day. He also watches a movie every single day, which is fairly extraordinary, unless you're an insomniac, which would explain some things. Far less extraordinary. <laughs> He has now seen Bo is Afraid. I want to get his thoughts on that. But because you generally have the more objectionable movie opinions, we will start again with uh, David Sampson. I'm hoping that some of the movies you guys select are from this century. I doubt, uh, I doubt that any of them are. This segment is demographically skewing very old <laughs> in a way that concerns me as somebody who knows that to stay popular, you have to do so with young people. <laughs> so no, no, number four. Five, David. I need time to make a new list. No, what do you this mean? Is terrible. Why? Because now you're making me feel badly for telling you what real comedy is. Airplane. <laughs> Young people don't know the movie. 1977. Airplane. Airplane. Celebrated a 46th anniversary <laughs> as one of the top comedies ever made. Are you kidding? Uh, Airplane is 50 years old. Very good. Uh, but I think a lot of people. Well, the comedy. We've talked about this before. Even though the righteous gemstones are doing it well, it is harder to do comedy well right now than it has ever been because there are not a lot of places where you can find 
good comedy outside of stand-ups right now in the film community. So in the last 10 years, it's real hard to find any classics. Anyone that, any movies that anyone would mention as like, that's one of the best comedies ever, you're going to have a hard time. Like Bridesmaids, it's not, you're not going to have a lot of hangover. You're not going to have a lot of options. Number four, David. But by the way, I just want to say on airplane, I will back up Samson. Don't call me Shirley. Kareem Abdul Jabbar. I mean, there's some great moments in there. So I'll back up David on airplane. Well more, more one liners per movie. More that has anything. to have more one liners than any movie ever made. I believe it actually has the record for that. Has to per cap. There's a Notre Dame uh, allusions in it, so I approve of this one, even no. though it's ancient. You're gonna approve a number four. I believe in you. Dumb and Dumber. Never seen it. Is that a demographic issue Same. or is that user error? Came Jeremy out before is, I was born. Jeremy has never seen it either. Yeah, I also haven't seen it. That's the most oh. recent movie. Uh, honestly, so honestly, far. they're really not missing out that much. I'm going to be honest with you here. There's two notable things from Dumb and Dumber, Jess. I'm telling you right now, you already know what they are. I'm telling you there's a chance. The scene with Jim Carrey, everyone knows that. And the scene where Jeff Daniels is in the bathroom. That's it. There's two really funny scenes. No. David, this is pretty shocking to put it at number four. I love Jim Carrey. I will back you up on The Truman Show. I'll back you up on Ace Ventura. I'll back you up on Liar Liar. To say this is the fourth greatest comedy of all time, this isn't even top four for Jim Carrey. This is a miss by you. It's the best movie Jim Carrey ever made, actually. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Although Truman Show is better. But Truman Show is not a comedy. See, you asked for comedies. Comedies, Adnan. Comedies Liar, Liar are, movies that are Ace solely Ventura there to make you laugh. Those two are very funny. Mike, Ace Ventura is better. Mike Ryan sides with Samson on this. It's one. a great movie. It's a great. It's incredibly quotable. There's a million things that happen in that movie that'll make you laugh. I, in terms of comedies, one of the most quotable films that there have been. I I imagine Jeremy and, and Jess have quoted the movie, not knowing that they're quoting Dumb and Dumber. I think I'd like to, at the end of this, have Jeremy and Jessica produce a list uh, together of top five comedies of all time based on their generation. Number three, David. Stripes. <laughs> 1981 or something. <laughs> Hold on. Is that another movie no one's heard of? Uh, <laughs> it can't be. This can't uh, be a uh, demographic uh, issue, Adnan. David, it's not that good. Listen, again, I, I like your nostalgia, and I appreciate that you're not skewing and uh, not catering to millennials. These are movies that you feel passionate about. It's occasionally funny. It's mildly amusing. It's got Bill Murray. It's got John Candy lighting up Francis. Like, yeah, there's some moments. This is not the third funniest movie of all time. That's ridiculous. It's the third funniest movie of all time to me. Uh, Tone, uh, yes, this is David's list. Tone, have you heard of any of these movies so I've far? I've seen Airplane. I love Airplane. I watched it like two weeks ago. Um, yeah, we're all in on Airplane, Tone. Li That'll liar, Liar, or what was it? Dumb uh, and Dumber. Dumb and Dumber. Dumber. I saw it maybe 20 years ago. I don't really care Forget for that one. Boy. Stripes Atta is boy, good. Tone. Um, boy, Tone. Number two, David. Number two is my favorite Levitard moment. Uh, movie with Richard Dreyfuss, Let It Ride, filmed right here. <laughs> you can complain all you want. That Nobody's has, heard of Let It Ride. It does, Nobody has care. heard of Let I'm, It Ride. Now they have. Now they have. You go watch Let It Ride, and you see a movie that is as quotable as Dumb and Dumber or as Airplane. There are lines in there that are so brilliant and so subtle no. that no. you will laugh every time. That's my criteria like, for comedy, Adnan. You have to actually laugh. It's not that funny, though. I'm telling you right now, if any of the crew right now watches Let It Ride, I'll give them the money that Richard Dreyfuss wins at the end of the movie. It's not funny. I'm telling you right now. I'll put up my own mortgage if I have to. Samson, it's dated. Some comedy doesn't work anymore. At that time, it was funny. You watch it now, it's not that funny. That means it's not the second funniest movie of all time. I've tested this, and I've watched every movie on this list in the last 365 days, and they, <laughs> they're still my top five. I uh, would say that if the audience wanted to find that movie funny, the funniest way to find it funny is that it represents the single most embarrassing moment of my professional career where we decided <laughs> with David Sampson to have a group outing where we invited listeners to sell out a movie theater and watch a movie with us because we'd done it before with Tropic Thunder and it was very successful and seven people showed up. <laughs> I hid behind a curtain. It was amazing, Dan. At you didn't talk to me for like at, three months at after the that. Hialeah Movie Co. I hid behind a curtain. Number one, Dan. <laughs> the number one most quotable movie and the funniest movie ever made is Fletch. 
You got a thumbs up from Tony back there. It's all ball bearings these days. (laughs) It's all ball bearings. Uh, All right, Adnan, your overall thoughts on David's list there before we get to your list. Yes, Jessica. Average year of release for David's list, 1982. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, is that the median? You're being kind by saying it skews older. This skews geriatric. Like, I'm terrified (laughs) to find out what Sam's favorite TV shows. Let me guess, the Golden Girls. He loves MASH, All in the Family. I love Lucy. Leave it to Beaver. Like, We've got the, the comedy is all from one era. Samson, I get it, right? You're going up at this time. Those movies are impactful for you. But there's other movies. you got to get out of your own lane. This is ridiculous. <laughs> How are you going to find a Scorsese movie to put on your list? That's all I want to know. <laughs> Adnan, what is number five on your list? Uh, best comedies of all time. Number five, Good Morning Vietnam. We're rocking from the Delta to the DMZ. It's Robin Williams at his funniest, most zany, most crazy. And you, you, you couldn't find a way to harness Robin Williams or Brady Lemons and said, we're not going to. We're going to make him a disc jockey during Vietnam and just let him let it ride. It's Robin Williams at his best, and it's funny. It's incredible. Bruno Kirby in the supporting cast. Obviously, Forrest Whitaker. Amazing movie. So funny. Samson, you love it. Come it's on. It's based on a real person, Adnan. You know that, right? Adrian Cronauer. But I'm okay. saying, who else could right. do that better than Robin Williams? Mike Ryan, you were shaking your head because it was another old movie. Is that the problem? Yes, and it's made me start putting together a list of the funniest movies of the last 10 years that I'll have by segment's end. Number four, Adnan. We've got good news. Thankfully, this is a movie that everybody has seen who is not under the age of 40. This is the end. Wow. That's very high. I've actually seen that. That's okay. very yeah. high. And also on, bang, bang. on, on my bang, list, bang. because ah. it can't, yeah. just made it, 2013. Seth Rogen, Evan Goldberg, huge fans of my favorite TV show, The Larry Sanders Show. So they said, let's do this for movies. We'll all play ourselves. James Franco and Jonah Hill and Jay Baruchel. And Jay Baruchel did not like Jonah Hill. And still to this day, isn't crazy about him. And that comes across in the movie. And at one point, Seth Rogen's like, guys, guys, take these. We're making a movie. But the real emotions and anger come out. And the funniest part of the movie is, I would argue, the funniest comedic actor the last 10 years, 15 years, Danny McBride. Every time Danny McBride's in that movie, you are laughing. To Dan's point, Righteous Gemstones, still really funny because of him. I love the fact they're skewering celebrity culture. It's crazy. They take chances. Hysterical. Would you like to borrow my handkerchief so you can wipe your mouth from absolutely sucking the young demographic by including this in your list? Oh, come on. Because Adnan, there's no way that is a top five comedy. What is it? Would you like one of Mike Ryan's socks? Number three. (laughs) Your money and you don't even know it. Swingers. John Favreau, long before he became John Favreau, making billions as a director of Iron Man and such, made this small, charming, funny movie, which is instantly quotable, featuring him and Vince Vaughn at their best, announcing their arrival as young stars. Guys who love a different era. The movie starts with the music of Dean Martin, Frank Sinatra. They are swingers. Back when swing music was making a comeback in the late 90s. But it's an instantly quotable movie. It's about guys being guys and trying to get together with women and overcoming past heartbreak. This one cuts the bone. I I thought it was charming and heartfelt. Samson, you have to love swingers. This is a great, great movie. Loved it, but not top five. And no one here saw it. I think they made it for like 20 grand as well. Uh, something ridiculous. Yeah, like one that. of the great drinking games, too. Money, baby, party. Anytime uh, someone says money, baby, party, you drink. You sign to an individual, and if they say Vegas, group drink. Uh, Tony, Jessica, Jeremy, you have all heard of Swingers, correct? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. with the pineapple on the door. Uh-huh. Or you put it yeah, upside yeah. down at the grocery store. On a cruise. Sure. Number two. The Naked Gun. That's a, I, I like The Naked Gun, too, but again, that's 1980s and a totally oh, different Listen, O.J. Simpson. Great comedy is like fine wine. It does not age. Colonel Frank Drebin, Lieutenant Frank Drebin, excuse me, as funny as it gets. Leslie Nielsen so great. David went with Airplane. I'm going to go with Naked Gun. we got to give the Zuckers credit. These guys are comedic geniuses. The Naked Gun, you watch it right now, you're still peeing your pants. It's that funny. And that's before we get to, oh, my God, it's Enrico Palazzo and O.J. Simpson as Nordberg. Amazing. Uh, Tony, you reacted uh, in the movie sometimes when somebody slides right under a door that's about to close them in forever. I snuck O.J. Simpson in there on Adnan because, yes, uh, put it on the poll, please, Juju, at Levitard Show. Does one of the greatest comedies ever include O.J. Simpson? Because I think he's right, but I don't think people can answer that question. Yes. Number one, Adnan. Those aren't pillows. Planes, trains, and automobiles. (laughs) 
Mike Ryan is disgusted with you. You're right not going to find a better comedy than John Candy <laughs> playing Del Griffith paired with Steve Martin's Neil Page, the ultimate buddy Prop comedy, comedy trying to get home for Thanksgiving. Incredible from start to finish. David, go ahead. You love it as much as I do. Come and on. And I don't understand how you say that comedies are like fine wine. They age with time when they're on your list. When they're old comedies on my list, <laughs> they're terrible. <laughs> when you're co- so I, I'm just not understanding how you say what you say. It's real simple. Mines are better than yours. That's All right. Very good. Like Thank d- you. Different era, but mines are funny. We come back with the millennial lists next.